show me your time slips. I want to see your time slips. Yeah, there's a lot of very entitled people out there in YouTube land. But you know what? Here. There's a time slip from the run against Casper. Last week's one run, winner take all grudge race against Casper. And that's my time slip. Obviously, I've got Andy's information blanked out because I don't know if he wants it out there. And stick around to the end of the video because I guarantee I'm going to piss off a lot of people. You have to wait. We're going to get there. And this video might be a little, let's say, long and, and rambly because, man, there's a lot of ground I have to cover with this. Since that race last week, there's been so much misinformation, so much speculation, so much just like nonsense surrounding it and the car that I felt that I need to bring everybody, I mean, people who haven't been around since the beginning with this whole endeavor don't know the whole story. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm not going to go into all of the crazy little nitty gritty details because they're really unimportant. But I'm going to cover the big picture. Where this car came from, what it is, what it currently consists of, and where we're going with it. So we started this project not long after we started the channels, about four years ago now. And uh, the goal with this car, this car was on its way to the scrapyard. I, in I intercepted it literally on the way to the pull apart, and I paid scrap price for it. The goal for this car was to build the lowest possible budget car that would run in the 10 second, um, would produce a 10 second quarter mile ET. We were going to do it with nothing but just junk parts, used parts, undesirable parts, the stuff that nobody wants, and we were going to do it as cheaply as possible. All right, that was the stated goal of the car. Now, the first mistake I made was, now you have to understand, when I first started this channel, I had been away from drag racing and anything drag racing related for years. And little did I know that during that period of time that I was gone, that I wasn't paying attention to any of this stuff, the world of everything that was relevant to this type of car moved to the eighth mile. Like, there, there, there is no quarter mile scene really anymore for this type of car. For instance, you know, you look at, okay, you get the world of the street outlaws and no prep canes and all of that stuff. But also, all of the no prep scene, everything is based around eighth mile, which is something I wasn't aware of when we started this channel. But that's besides the point. And it really has nothing, nothing, there's no real bearing on stuff except that, like I said, the stated goal is to run, be capable of running a 10 second quarter mile. So that's what we did. We built this car using a four door B body with, I mean, a, a 318, like just completely undesirable parts. Originally, the car was set up with a four speed, and that was a big mistake. I, I broke a lot of stuff, made a lot of, uh, um, it was just a bad scene. It was a bad scene. So last year, I decided, no, I'm going to convert this thing to automatic, and that's what we did. And I'm going to go over all of the nuts and bolts, all of the guts of the car, as much of it as I feel comfortable giving out, all right? So, uh, The race between Andy and I developed because of, I called him out, and it happened because we were trying to help friends of ours promote an event that they were having last year. But there was just too much weirdness, too much politics, too much like craziness, and I decided that I don't want to have anything to do with this, and, and I moved on. Now, Andy's relationship with all of that stuff, that's up to him. But for me, it was just too much weirdness. So when Andy's truck wasn't ready to go at the date that we had decided that we were going to race, I was thrilled. I'm like, great. We'll just meet someplace else, and we'll just have our own race, and, and we'll go with it. And, and Andy and I have been wanting to race each other for years now. So we finally got that out of the way. The terms of the race, one run, winner take all, no practice shit, no nothing, was to try to make it as much like a street race as possible. Neither one of us was supposed to have any significant testing and tuning time on the car. We were going to just do the best that we could, add up, the, you know, add up all of the variables, set it for the best that we thought that we could get away with under the bad situations, bad circumstances, and go for it. Now... 
we ran on a cold track. We were the third pair of cars down this track. Fourth pair of cars, I don't know. But the glue was fresh. It was like, it was bad. It was like a skating rink. And, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But that's how we wanted it. The track that we raced at is uphill. Like literally, it's uphill. And I'm not saying that just, you know, like to stage a car with a stick, with a clutch, it's hard because the car just rolls out of the beams. As soon as you stop, it just rolls backwards, as they had happened to me a couple of times at this track. Um, talking to everybody in the area that runs that track and, and several others in the area, that track is two-tenths slower. This is important to know now. That track is two-tenths slower than a level track. But it's a great track and has a great atmosphere and everything is groovy. It, it's got some altitude to it, but it means nothing to me as far as I'm concerned with this car because it's nitrous. It's creating its own atmosphere as it goes along. And there was another thing too. There's a comment. I pinned this comment. And this guy was like, take the nitrous bottle off that car and you'll lose all day long. I, 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 I replied to him like, but it's in the name of the car. Bottle rocket. It's specifically bottle rocket meaning the bottle the nitrous bottle in the trunk that's the definition of the car youtube land you know so and anyway the stated goal was to have a, a street racer quote street racer capable of running a 10 second quarter mile for with 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 like literally like junk parts so Let's let's talk about a couple of a couple of various rumors. I've, I, it's come to my attention that people believe what is a rumor going around that this car wouldn't pass tech at an NHRA track, which is absurd. I mean, it's beyond absurd. Um, first off, Andy is a licensed tech inspector. If there's anything crazy with this car, believe me, it would have it would have gone out. I have teched cars in the past. I know what tech takes. This car would pass tech. This car is a legal stock eliminator car. You have to understand something now. The rolling chassis of that car is a legal stock eliminator car. It will pass tech to 1150. 1150 is the magic number. Um, 750 eighth mile. In, at any track, anywhere on earth, right? There is a, literally, it's, it's good to go. It has every single thing that it needs to pass tech to 1150. All right. It's never actually been to it. Somebody told me, they, oh, you couldn't get it through tech at Bowling Green or whatever it was. The car's never been to Bowling Green. It's, I've never, ever, ever attempted to take it to a quarter mile track. And if I did, trust me when I tell you, I could bring that thing to any NHRA sanctioned event and it would pass with flying colors. All right, let's go on here. So, we raced specifically under the worst conditions possible because that was the challenge, right? We didn't do it at the event that we were supposed to. There were delays and so on and so forth, but we finally got together. Our schedules coincided, all of the stars aligned, and we were able to race, and you saw the results of that. Let's go over the time slip. Let's go over the time slip. So the first things first is let's talk about reaction time. Now, launching this car is a little on a difficult side, and I have never actually launched it in competition. So I had to do a little bit of guessing now. The car lifts the left front pretty violently on the hit. So when I staged the car, I had to, I had to think about that. I had to have that in my mind because it's going to move up before it moves forward. So I staged the car as shallowly as possible. Like I just creeped into the stage beam and stopped. And then from that point on, I really had to guess because I don't know what the car is going to do. Again, that was a big part of this race that we had with, with Andy. We didn't know. We tried to leave as many variables open as possible so it would be like a real gunfight. Okay. So I ended up, I ended up with a, 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 a 569 reaction time, All right, which is, which is like 610 slower than it should have been. Andy had issues getting his car off the line, and that's that's for Andy to do a breakdown video on his if he chooses to. But the 569, while it was a sloppy light, it was the best light that I could come up with at that time, and it was enough to do the job. Okay, now the car had a one. Let me see this here. Let me see this. So we had a one. 66 uh, 60 foot time 166.5 that was slow 
I, and it was slow because the car broke traction right after it left. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to, oh, the suspension, oh, the car is doing this, right? Well, the car did a double wheelie, right? And if you watch the video, you'll see the car did a double wheelie. On the hit, it lifts up the left front, it moves out, I'm going to say, like, between, like, 5 and 10 feet, and then you see smoke behind the car. That was the, the tires breaking traction. Then it caught, and when it caught, it wheelied again. It did that second wheelie that was in there. I lost probably i mean i i gotta speculate a tenth tenth and a half off of the 60 foot what the 60 foot should have been because of that traction break and all of that wasted motion now if the car had bit and it, well the car did bite but if it stayed hooked up but well, it wouldn't have been a problem the car would have just carried that left front wheel to right where it settled it set it down the second time and all would have been good but it ended up black tracking if you if you watch the video you see, right after the car goes, there's a set of diagonal tracks that lead towards the center line. It's because the car was black track and it was spinning the tires all the way through that, that first gear thing. It only bit on the first 10 feet and then it was, it was spinning the tire and lifting the front end. The car makes a bunch of torque. The motor, the whole combination is designed specifically for torque. There is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into the motor in a minute, but just keep this in mind. The engine that I set up for this race, and that's in the car now, zero consideration was given to RPM. 100% of consideration was given to torque, bottom end and mid-range torque. I'll get into, I'll, I'll share as much as I want to in a minute. I'll, I'll talk about the engine. So, gave up a good bit on the 60 foot. It has nothing to do with the car having dead front shocks because that, that is the oldest Mopar trick in the world. That there's, don't take my word for it, right? You, but it's the oldest Mopar trick in the world and the car handles beautifully. It may have looked crazy, right, on camera and, and okay, it started to head towards the center line, but tr you gotta trust me when I tell you, inside the car, it was like just, 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 Nothing. I mean, like literally just look and, and the car went right back where it had to. The car handles absolutely beautifully. Even with all of that stuff that was going on, 100% stable, 100%. You got to trust me. I was driving it. If it was hairy, I'd, I'd tell you right now, oh, it was hairy. It was going all over the place. No, from inside the car, it was just like, and then, and then just steer a little bit to the left and keep the hammer down. It was all good. So... We gave up, we gave up, we ran 769, we ran 769 um, ET, we gave up two tenths of what we would have had on a flat track, we gave up at least a tenth, maybe two tenths in that 60 foot because it was spinning the tires. You do the math, okay? You do the math and figure out what it would have run if those things didn't happen. Now also, the mile an hour, car ran 91.10 miles an hour. The question is, did I actually leg it all the way through or is that what the car will run flat out? I know the answer, you could speculate on the answer, but we'll just leave it at that, okay? It ran 91 miles an hour. So for all of you people who say, show me your time slip, show me your time slip. Well, there you go, there's a time slip, there's all of the factors that went into that run, all of the things, all right? Are you happy, are you satisfied? You got a time slip. The time slip was completely irrelevant in that event, in that race. We knew neither car was tuned, was set up for the track. And I'm going to go into a couple other things too. All right, so let's talk about the tune on the car. The first is that the back tires, I got drag radials on this car. And without any practice runs, there was no way for me to know how much pressure it actually wanted. So I hit the starting line with 22 pounds of air in the tires. 22 pounds. Now, look at the tire. 
So 22 pounds was obviously too much. I needed to be 18 pounds or possibly lower. I don't know, we'll find out when we go run the car some more. But on a 10 inch tire, I only had eight inches of contact patch, which would explain why the car wanted to smoke the tire so badly. Now also you notice that it, there was a big lean, right? She, she, she lifted the left front, right front stayed on the ground. So a lot of speculation about that. This car has an air shock on the right side. Here's the valve for it. Okay, I, I only, I guessed at how much air to put in it. There's no way for me to know how much air it wants. So I guessed at it and I didn't have enough. And that's why the car leaned as hard as it did to the, to, to the back, you know, to the right, lifting up the left front like that. The next time I go out, or if we had had practice runs, I would have had more air in the shock. So the next run, if Andy and I had made another run, which would have defeated the whole purpose of this one and done off the trailer race. Remember, those are the terms of the race. But if I had made another run that day, I would have dropped two or three pounds out of the tires and I would have added a significant amount of air to the right rear, right rear uh, shock. And that would have evened the car out and helped it to bite better. Plus, if we had run on a track that wasn't cold, that had been run in a few times and the glue had been worked in, I mean, that alone would have been a factor. So I'm telling you all of these things so that you could do the math and you could figure out exactly what this car should have done, would have done, whatever. So let's talk about the car itself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, I'm going to spill my guts on the car, everything you need to know. While it is extensively lightened, everything I could take out of this car and leave it, you know, basically a car. And, and when I say this is a car, I mean literally it has headlights, taillights, turn signals. It can drive anywhere, anytime, right? I, I choose not to. It's got full, you know, it's got a full bench seat, stock steering wheel, door panels, okay? There is not a single hole drilled in this car anywhere in it for the sake of losing weight. Now, that's not to say that it's not extensively lightened because I spent a lot of time going through this car and eliminating any fat that didn't need to go. What does the car weigh? 2,904 pounds minus me. I'm 195, between 193 and 195. The car weighs with three gallons of fuel in it, ready to go, sitting on the starting line, minus me, 2,904 pounds. It's about 800 pounds lighter than it started out. Maybe someday I'll do a video on all of the different things, all of the areas that I, that I took weight out of this thing, but I don't want to do it now. Just telling you what the weight of the car is. Okay, it has a 456 gear. Oh, but then the other thing too, it has steel wheels all the way around. And actually these are heavy, heavy wheels. These are the factory cop car wheels at 15 by sevens. And then the fronts are 15 by five and a half. Drag radials on the back and front runners on the front. But they're heavy, heavy wheels. And that all has to do with that sleeper street race sort of thing that the car has. It has like all real glass, okay? The windows roll down, everything functions. Look, it's got a mirror, right? So you get the general idea. Originally the car had a four speed in it. I converted it to automatic after breaking rear ends and I, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of carnage, all kinds of craziness. It wasn't worth the house, so I decided to go with an automatic. Now, I went with a 727. The car would be at least, at, at the very least, two tenths quicker with a 904. You know, and I know this, and I have 904s every place, everywhere. But I chose to go with a 727 because a 727 will handle this what I, what I intend to do with this car, stock, without any modifications. Whereas, to build a 904 to live with nitrous and all of that, that would have cost money and it would have been out of the spirit of the car. So, it has a dead stock 727. I just rebuilt it, I just went through it. It has new, new clutches, seals, band, and, uh, and that's it. The converter is a nitrous-specific converter. It's a 4,500 RPM converter that Shane Polito from TSI built for me, and it works flawlessly. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. The rear suspension on this car is stone stock. Dead stock. It's the exact 
leaf springs that this car came with, 318 like low performance leaf springs. It has zero traction aids to it, nothing. It has, all I did was I undid the leaf spring, or the leaf spring clamps behind the axle and added two clamps in front of the axle on each side and that's it. The driver's side has a three-way adjustable shock which I haven't even begun to play with and the passenger side has an air shock and that's to preload the, the, the weight over, so to, to make it lift the left front a little bit less, right, and even things out. But the suspension on the car is stone stock. The front suspension is stone stock. It has a pair of drilled out shocks so that there's absolutely no resistance to the upward movement and the car starts transferring weight immediately. And you could see on the initial hit, it was perfect. And there, there were people that were like, oh yeah, the rear suspension is terrible because the car, car couldn't stay, no, the, the rear suspension is fine. The car didn't, I had the tires overinflated on a cold, just glued track. There was no traction. So it, so it smoked the tires. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? The car, if you watch the car make its initial move, even with the handicap of not having any air in that right shock, it bit and it launched and it lifted the left front wheel. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? No, the springs didn't oscillate or anything like that. Watch the freaking video, okay? The car just smokes the tires. The front end comes down. It starts to grab a little bit. As soon as it starts to grab a little bit, the front end comes back up again. As far as I'm concerned, it's perfection. It just needs to be tuned and tweaked and dialed in just a little bit. And I'll get there. The motor that's in this car. Okay, I, I was not exaggerating in that video, right? When I said that it is just a 318 it's a it's a it's a actually it's the block that came with this car it's a 1972 318 block it has been bored 30 over because i the only way i could save this block was to bore it right it has replacement pistons it has 30 over well okay it, it's it's bored slightly over 30 but only because i wanted a really loose fit on the piston don't worry about it uh the rings obviously they're stock rings they're gapped for nitrous the bottom end of the engine is all 273. It has a 273 steel crank in it, 273 rods. All of the bearings in there are used old bearings. Every single bearing in that engine has copper showing, okay? They all went in there with copper showing because I wanted this thing to be loose, right? And it is. It revs like a chainsaw. It does exactly what I wanted it to do. I, it had, it's, it's got zero oil pressure. When the thing is hot, when it's warmed up, the gauge just lays there on, on zero. And then you give it gas and poof, she comes right up. I get 45 pounds of oil pressure over 3,000 RPM. The motor is never intended to see over 6,000 RPM. Going with the formula of seven pounds for every 1,000 RPM, it's right exactly where I need it to be. The results speak for themselves. The car made the run, even the, the side clearance on the rods, you just take the rods and go tuck, 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 tuck on the, it, like, like, if you're one of those, if you're one of those like anal retentive, like you know, ma machinist kinds, you, you would you would have a coronary if you could see what was inside that engine. But you know what? It runs, it runs hard. It, it made that run. It has many to go. I, I figured it was going to scatter. I might say scatter. Anything was going to put rods out. I just figured it would break a piston, or it would just it, there wouldn't be anything left to it. But you know what? After that run, perfection, right? It's it's ready to go again. There is nothing exotic under this hood. So. The camshaft, you know what? I'm not going to tell you the exact specs of this cam, cam that's in here. Suffice to say, it's a nitrous cam, and any reputable cam grinder can duplicate this cam for you without, you know, don't worry about it. I got a nitrous express plate. Um, the solenoids are, are actually oversized. They're underutilized. Um, I'm not going to tell you how much I was spraying on that run, but it wasn't nearly as much as I could have. Go, judging by judging by the, uh, the plugs the front of the engine look it's got a stock alternator it's got a stock water pump it's got a it's got well it's got an electric fan okay but all of that stuff is stock the belt was on it the charging system was doing everything it was supposed to do during that run um, the heads are 273 heads as I said before the whole the zero consideration was given for high rpm power everything in this engine everything in this setup is designed around torque torque bottom end and mid-range torque 
So it's got 273 heads that I ported the living hell out of, but left the stock size valves because velocity meant more to me in this situation than flow does. And again, see the results speaks for themselves. The car works fine and has a lot more in it, a lot more in it. And this isn't even the good motor. I actually have another 318 over there that's got good cylinder heads and all of the good stuff and, and a bigger intake manifold. This is a small intake manifold. This is a, a, a like a street dominator or a street, whatever the hell it is. It's a street manifold, but again, torque, mid-range torque. The carburetor is an 850 Holley, all right? I mean, that's, that's what it is. It's just an 850 Holley and it's jetted on the fat side. The ignition system is a stock 340 dual point distributor with, with all of the advanced locked out of it, okay? I mean, that's it. The car would have run, car would have run exactly the same with a stock single point distributor in it, but I like the dual point because the dual point works well with those big yellow coils that I like to use. So that's why it's got a dual point in there but it, it, there's nothing significant to it. A regular stock single point ignition set with stock points and everything else would have run exactly, exactly what this car ran on that day. But that's what's in there. That's the, that's, okay. The coil is just big yellow coil, $10 swap meat piece. The only trick part in this entire setup is the condenser. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. That's a condenser. That's, that's left over from my nitro days laying in the bottom of my toolbox. That's the condenser from a Mallory Super Mag 5, I think it was, I don't even know, but that's what that is. That's the only trick part in, a, in, in the ignition system of that car. The plugs are uh, Autolite's uh, 65s. Autolite, Autolite 65s, and they're even gapped at like 35, and the ones that are in there and were in there for that run, gapped to 35, not even side gapped or, or anything crazy like that. I just took them out of the box, checked the gap, stuck them in, and sent it. So there's like no tuning, and the ignition on this car is locked out at 32 degrees. Currently, it's at 32 degrees. Um, it's got stock 340 valve springs in it. It's got... <laughs> it's got the cheapest Chinese roller rockers and cheapest Chinese roller lifters that there are. Just solid roller lifters. Originally, this can was hydraulic, and I used the name brand super high dollar hydraulic roller lifters, and two of them failed. I, and I was like, okay, done with this stuff. So I ordered a set of the cheapest roller rockers, solid rollers that I could find on eBay, and the cheapest roller uh, roller lifters and the cheapest roller rockers where it's got that's it just it's the ultimate in junk but again light valve springs and an intended rpm use no higher than let's say 6,000 6,000 rpm and they're fine the stuff will live forever so you know the the part has to match the usage if the usage is light duty then you can get away with a light duty part all right um it's got a Holly Blue pump in it. It's got a regular, just just a regular regulator in it. I've got it set for a seven psi. Uh, the headers are small tube. They're they're one and five eighths uh, headers with with extensions. Nothing fancy. Nothing crazy. Just swap meet junkyard headers. I have about and I lost track a long time ago, but I have about forty. 800 or so dollars in this car give or take but if i didn't spend all of the time and the craziness and everything with the four speed and had just built this combination the way it is now from the get-go i could duplicate this car exactly sitting as it did that day on the starting or was sitting as it is right now i could duplicate this car for under 2500 bucks and I could do it many times over because every single thing in that car is just, it's either, it's either used or undesirable or outdated or, or it's, it's all junk. It's 100% junk from one end to the other. And I'm proud of that. Now, I said at the beginning of this video that I was going to piss some people off. And I'm going to do that right now, okay? So I said that this car was going to be capable of running a 10 second quarter mile ET or a seven flat in the eighth mile. Because remember, when I started this, eighth mile wasn't really in my mind. So I said it's, it's capable of running a seven flat 
the seven flat eighth mile. All right. Well, you've seen the time slip. You know that the car ran a 769 under those circumstances at the altitude, spinning the tires and doing all that other stuff. So as far as I'm concerned now, as far as I'm concerned now, it's time for this car to graduate to the next level. And all of you people who and so all you entitled little people who insist on, I want to see your time slip. Show me your time slip. Show me your time slip. Well, you know what? I just did show you the time slip. And now, just to piss you off, that's the car's future. Okay? I'm still going to cover the things that we do with it, and I'll explain technically what happens, and I'll explain improvements, or, or as we go along with this car, I'm going to do all that. But you know what? That's going on the car. Right? I'll tell you what, you regular viewers, you tell me where this should go. Should this go on the windshield, or should this go on one of the quarter windows, or put it on the back window? I don't know. I leave it up to you guys to tell me where to put this thing. But that's it. It started out as a street racer. It started out as a project, a street racer project. And now, now that we've done with this race with Andy, and now that it's all been done in front of the, the cameras and all the other stuff, okay, now it becomes a street race car. And before you ding-dongs out there in YouTube land, I called them out. I said, I said, I'll race you with my whatever it is. Get a grip. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just race some random Ding dong, that, that calls me out on freaking YouTube, right? No, I, common sense, right? I, which, which I know is a tree that doesn't grow in everybody's garden. I get that, okay? But common sense. How the hell are you supposed to take a random challenge from a random stranger in a car that you've never heard of, never seen, never know? I'll race on my terms who I want to race, when I want to race them, where I want to race them, all right? And, and you just, you know what, you want to race me? You be someplace where I could see you and your car and everything else, and then maybe we'll talk about it, okay? But seriously, forget this call stuff. You're an idiot. You're an absolute idiot. You try to call somebody out, a, a, a total stranger, you call in somebody, come on, you're an idiot. Go away. All right. So I know I think I covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover on this car and and the race and everything else. So I know it was a long video, right? I hope you stuck with me this long, and I hope you got something out of that. Um, there will be a lot more on this car as we go forward, but I'm not showing any more time slips. I'm not talking about any more times. You could speculate. You could say, "Oh, he's a quitter. Oh, he's trying to hide something or whatever," because there's idiots all over the freaking place. No. That's my toy, that's my hot rod. It was intended to be a street racer slash grudge racer, grudge racer, and now, guess what it is? It's a street racer slash grudge racer, and I'll race who I want, where I want, when I want. And that's the end of that. I'll see you tomorrow.